Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another garden tour. So it is about mid-July right now and things have been crazy here. If you've watched any of my recent videos where I've talked about the heat wave that pretty much hit the entire country. But down here in the south, we got hit pretty hard. Um, things have been hot and then it's been raining and then it's been hot and then it's been raining. Thank God for the rain because otherwise it would just be hot. So. We have done a little bit of work out in the garden since the heat wave. We did some maintenance. I planted this crepe myrtle. I will link all of that below, but the garden is definitely, uh, there's still a lot of things to be done. I need to deadhead all these cone flowers so that hopefully they will flush back with new blooms. I got a whole shipment of iris bulbs right before the heat wave, and I should have brought them in the house. They're on the porch. They are all turning brown. I need to get those in the ground ASAP. Anything I did not finish with cardboard down by the shed, the weeds are just going psycho. Weeds everywhere, so I need to go finish that project. There's lots of things to do, but any garden, there's lots of things to do. If I wait for everything to be perfect, we will never do a garden tour. So we're just gonna go throughout the garden and I'm going to show you how it looks, all the good, the bad, the ugly, and then we will Keep on trucking. Let's start down by the shed. All right, so down by the shed, things actually look pretty good for what they are. The main problem is that while all the plants I've planted are doing fabulous, the weeds are also doing fabulous. So you can see everything up in here that I've been pulling out. All these are salvia plants. I have moved them like three times and they just keep coming back. So I think I'm probably just gonna pull this round. Anywhere where there's a smallest crack in the cardboard, weeds are coming out. But the actual plants look fabulous. So we planted hydrangeas, super tunia vista fuchsia, and butterfly bushes. These are the proven winners pugster pink butterfly bushes and my gardenia and as you can see they look fabulous but look at this weeds weeds everywhere so like this is a weed these are iris that i planted back here so i really need to come in pull these weeds and put down a whole layer of cardboard everywhere that i don't want plants or weeds and then that way we can come in with our um, our bricks and put down compost and make actual garden beds, but it just, it's been too hot. It's been too rainy. Haven't been able to do that. I did get <laughs> there in here. We got a whole new layer of, whew, well, there we go. Whole new layer of boxes to break down and put out to suppress weeds. And these are big ones. So I'm hoping they will go pretty far for what I need, but they're all full of paper. So I'm using the paper for a different project. I'm gonna take the cardboard and we need to come over here and basically start from the air conditioner and go all the way down to the edge of the fence. Then I need to plant my Peggy Martin Rose, planted moms, it looks great. Even this Pugster Pink butterfly bush looks great, but I mean, the weeds, y'all, like, they're just, like, th there was no weeds here when I planted all this. And they're, like, full-grown weeds now. So I'm going to have to spend a couple hours out here getting this all back under control. I also want to clean this area up. Then it is mid-July, which for my stock tank means I need to replant a new cucumber. Um... My one watermelon is still doing great, still cooking. The lavender was doing fabulous until the heat wave. Lavender really does not like heat. So I'm probably just going to take all that out, put something else in. Strawberries been doing great, lots of strawberries. My rose finally is putting out lots of new growth. And the coneflowers, which were all glorious, they did so good this year. They are just past their prime. And I've been spraying them. I think I have, yeah, grasshoppers 
and so I have been spraying them as well but oh my god you guys like I need to take care of this one because apparently one grasshopper can do ridiculous amounts of damage so let me get rid of this guy and I'll be right back oh but here's the other there's the other good pest so we have also a whole bunch of praying mantises over here praying mantises are excellent grasshoppers are not excellent <sighs> all right well that little guy's gone now so we just need to come in i mean you can see oh man there's another one I, I, there's got to be a whole bunch in here i sprayed bt but i think i need to spray neem oil so i'm gonna try that but i mean just you can see the damage that they're doing to these plants so let me take care of this guy i'm gonna have to come out here and just really look at these leaves but i did that this morning i didn't see any and now of course as soon as i'm filming i'm gonna see all of them y'all are such good helpers all right got rid of that little guy i'm gonna try the neem oil and i'm gonna try cutting the coneflowers back but if any of y'all have any better solutions for grasshoppers please let me know because right now they're pretty much loving the coneflowers and leaving the rest of the garden alone but sooner or later they will migrate I do not want them to eat everything else. So I did cut back my Angelonia. So it's looking a little rough right now, but it'll come back. Petunia is doing great, even though I haven't fertilized it in a little bit. And if we come across the way, this garden bed is filling in quite nicely. This Lobelium is actually one of the few that's looks decent right now. And then the three Petunias in this spot have gone nuts as well as um, planted a whole swash of vinca in here and they're not sure about that and this Laura Pedlum is doing great my oak leaf hydrangea is doing great I think this is a weed or is that part of the petunia I think that's a weed the petunia is planted up there pretty sure pretty sure that's a weed <laughs> yeah, that's that's a weed thanks weedy weed <sighs> all my salvia are doing really good they are not growing nearly as big and lush as they did where the coneflowers were last year but they are growing and they just continue to multiply they will continue to multiply for next year. So eventually we'll have a lush swash there. More petunias. I did go ahead. The cosmos that were all throughout here were all just dead. So I replanted some Proven Winners Truffula Pink Gumbrina. It looks fabulous. Have a knockout rose here that's getting ready to bloom. That'll be pretty can see my wisteria, both my stick and my bush, killing it. Um, lamb's ears doing good. Planted this brand new hydrangea. It looked beautiful from the nursery. Then the heat weave hit. And even though it was in the shade with water, it really suffered. So I, I brought it up here. I was going to plant it down by the shed. And I think it's just too sunny for this specific type of hydrangea. So I brought it up here. It is a red lace cap and it is, I mean, you can see all this new growth. It is loving it up here so much better and it has double water. Hydrangeas love water. So I do think next year you can see I've got all my tiger lilies throughout here. I think I'm going to try to plant a whole bunch more. I want this whole area to just be foxglove and tiger lilies. And then the cosmos. I ordered these off a girl on Etsy and they are beautiful, but they were supposed to be a much shorter variety for the front of the border. And they were all supposed to be pink, which like, this is beautiful, but it's not pink. This is beautiful, but it's not pink. I actually really like these doubly ones. So, you know, we'll see how they do. We might have to move those further back into the garden next year. And then this foxglove's basically spent. I wish one of the tiger lilies was blooming today. You can see they were bloomed yesterday. And this one is about to open. So maybe I can sneak a, a picture on the screen. My Veronica are doing great, attracting all the pollinators. 
And my one pincushion plant is finally blooming. Other two still aren't. And this little hydrangea, I probably need to come in and take some of these old blooms off, but it's looking great. I find that down here, my hydrangeas always get this kind of like fungus on the leaves. I spray for it. They'll do fine. They'll come back next year. It's not hurting the plant. It just doesn't look great. And then, of course, the twilight crepe myrtle with those hot pink blooms. So pretty. So across the way, we've got the vincas doing well. All my glads are pretty much spent. Lamb's ears doing great. This hydrangea's just been blooming for me and keeps putting out new growth. The foxglove here are pretty much all spent, but the truffle of pink starting to come in. This right here is like the best luscious spot in the garden right now. These pentas, you can see they're still in their pots. We weren't sure if these petunias would need the whole area. So mom said, just leave them in their pots. They have water run into them. That way, if I need more room for the petunias, I'll just pop them out. And the crepe myrtles over here are finally starting to bloom. I am obsessed. If you watched my maintenance video recently, I've been so stressed thinking my crepe myrtles weren't going to bloom. And they finally have started to bloom. And I may have had a little bit of a freak out in that video because I was so excited. But they're just so pretty. I love it. I love this view of the garden. And you can see these are the Supertunia Vista Snowdrift. This is one plant and each urn right there. And obviously they are doing fabulous. They love the sun. They're on drip and they just kind of do their own thing. And then we come throughout. Unfortunately, something is eating these salvia. And I have sprayed them, but I might need to cut them back and just spray the ground because they look awful. And then right through here, you can see, boop, 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 boop. Looks like something, something quite big might have uh, fallen and landed and crushed everything. I fell and I landed right here and I crushed a whole bunch of Inca and lamb's ear and a whole bunch of my blue salvia that I just cut back, but... They'll bounce back. The rest of the vinca are looking great right here. More petunia, more vincas. I just cut these comb flowers back, so hopefully they will grow. The rest of my knockout roses and my butterfly bushes that we transplanted are looking amazing. Need to put some fertilizer on this homestead purple because it still has not bloomed. My Laura Pedlums right here, they all look fabulous. They have grown so much in the last year. Love it. This foxglove that is for next year is actually putting up a bloom stock. So that's exciting. I'm hoping it will bloom this year and next year, but let me try to get you a spot. Like it is, it is huge. It'll be beautiful. And then... This is one of the, my blue butterfly bushes, and you can see it has lots of new blooms. And I, I just love how organic butterfly bushes are. Cut back all these salvia. They are starting to bloom a little more. Here's more of those foxgloves for next year. None of the other ones are shooting up stalks this year. And then back in here, we've got a couple from this year that are just about done. Need to come in and fertilize and deadhead this knockout rose because he must have bloomed last week when it was hot. And I really, really need to put some more compost right in here because all the rain has washed it out. Whew. Definitely I'm not been down to this side of the garden for a minute. So all my begonias are struggling a little bit. It's like something's eaten them. This little lobelium is like non-existent. And unfortunately, I'm so upset. My Shirley Temple peony tuber that was growing and looked fabulous is dry and crispy. So I am hoping it will come back next year. Needed to be planted a lot sooner this year and it just didn't get there, which means it 
was trying to put on growth in the hottest part of our heat cycle during that heat wave. And it's just, that's not going to work. You can see the peony here. These are the Jacorma ones and the one right back there. They look fine since we got them in the ground early enough that they were able to adapt to the heat. So they are tubers. They will come back next year, but no growth this year. I had a whole swath of vincas right in here, and I think they all died in the heat as well. So, you know, zinnias looking okay. We'll just come out with some more compost, water, fertilize everything, and sometimes gardening is two steps forward, one step back. Either way, I am loving my new pink crepe myrtle, and that my white ones are finally blooming. You can see up here that we are going to have buds on this one as well. So sooner or later, they will both be in bloom, but they kind of bloom according to sun. So you can see the part in the most sun is blooming first and it's going to just slowly work its way down until both trees are in bloom. But I love that these trees are big and sprawling and this one is a little more upright. So I don't know. That makes me happy. But I really need to go spray everything for grasshoppers and at least cut back those cone flowers. See if I can get that under control before they spread to the rest of my garden. So if you have any advice for how to deal with grasshoppers, leave it down below, please. I'll see you next month. Bye, y'all. Good girl! Good job, lady!